So it's time to paint the cauldron and I've been uh, trying to figure out exactly what and how I want to paint it. Uh, initially I wanted to paint a, uh, a mural along uh, the sides, some sort of battle scene or like a city scape or something with maybe in flames. But uh, I mixed that idea uh, mainly because I put all these doodads here and I just don't have enough room to make what I wanted to do, uh, you know, to paint it out and still have it uh, identifiable. And the other reason is um, when it's painted and on the battlefield, you're going to be looking at it like that. So you're not even going to see the sides, you know, unless you uh, get eye level with it. Uh, so I nixed that idea. And then I was going through a couple of other, other ideas, thinking about doing like a marble effect or just a lightning effect. And I started doing some research, looking uh, for photos of real marble, and um, I actually came across uh, a picture of some bronze with a blue patina that I really liked. And I painted patina uh, about 10 years ago, and it came out really well. And so I decided, you know, hey, that's gonna be a good, you know, throwback to what I did 10 years ago. Let me see if I can redo it now. And let me show you what I did 10 years ago high-tech camera work here. That is a Rackham Dwarf Chariot that I did. And uh, it's one of my favorite models. I'm kind of disappointed I sold this one off. But uh, it came out really nice. And uh, what uh, gives me a bit of pride is whenever anyone says anything about uh, how do you paint a patina on a miniature, they, someone else will say, oh, you know, look at this model and they'll point to that picture. So that's, uh, that's a nice feeling. So what I'm going to do is recreate that um, except for with instead of green patina do a blue patina and do the patina a bit heavier. Um, and hopefully this will work out. Uh, luckily I still have my recipe from when I did that 10 years ago. Uh, whenever you're painting you know write down what paints you use because you know you may might be fresh in your head now but you stop painting and then a year or two later you go back to paint the model again and well I never remember what I used so I still have that recipe and uh, time to get started the first step is SS camo black camo, oh, it's SS camo black now it used to be SS camo black brown And the whole thing about the patina look is, um, since the patina dulls the metallic sheen, you want to start off with non-metallic paints and then just work up to a little bit of metallic along the edges. So this is going to be, this step you really don't have to stipple, but I will be stippling the other uh, steps to get a nice good uh, effect for the patina. And. Um, Anyway, this is my stippling brush. This is just an old brush that I clipped the uh, the tip off. And if you never stippled before, it is extremely simple. On the other layers, this, like I said, this will be more important. Um, right now, I'm trying to cover up everything all the black but as I progress with the different layers you know I'm going to do less and less stippling so all those previous layers are going to show through and that's what really brings out the uh, the effect we're going for here okay my next step according to my uh, very old not too detailed uh, painting instructions is uh, to mix in some flat brown with the uh, camo black brown and then repeat the stippling process again and this one's going to go over pretty much everything um, as we mix more and more colors up uh, lighter and lighter colors are going to be working higher and higher on the model so think of the shade going down here and then um, the highlights going up however in this case uh, we're actually talking about weathering so the, the top's going to get less weathering than the bottom because uh, the bottom is you know where all the sediment and rain 
would collect and so that would be the first areas to start getting the patina on it and then as we go higher and higher as well um, we want to use less and less stippling so in case, yeah, that, is that off? no that's on camera, yeah so just so you see, dipping it in the paint wiping a little bit off it's not quite a dry brush, it's something similar to that uh, basically you just want to wipe it off so you don't get streaks so I'm not sure how I came up with this recipe so long ago because uh, I never would have thought of it nowadays putting a uh, green, yellow green color English uniform over a very red brownish color but it seems to work so I'm not complaining Now, I'm not sure what the main color was uh, on the original model. I think I went, you know, concentrated more on the English uniform on that model than I was initially thinking today. So, trying to work in a bit more English uniform, and I'm also doing a couple little stipples down here, so there's a nice, you know, breaking up of the pattern effect. So it's not just all, you know. All, all the English uniforms up here and there's nothing down here, I'm just doing an occasional little stipple here and there, not too much. I still want most of the concentration up uh, top. And also when you're stippling, you know, if you get some, you can see there's more red here from the flat brown than there is here. I mean, that's a good thing. You don't want this to look uniform. The only thing you do want to avoid is, you can see some areas here where I had a bit too much paint on the brush and it left like a little streak. Um, that hopefully will be covered over after, you know, the next couple layers of stippling. But uh, it just means you had too much paint on the brush. I, well, not you. I had too much paint on the brush. So, you know, try to avoid that. So about 10 years ago, I must have been on drugs or something because I have no idea how I came up with these paint colors for what I'm doing here. Uh, the second to last step here is uh, mixing the English uniform with uh, green gray. I, I don't know how I came up with this. Um, the English uniform does have you know a bit of green in it, so maybe that's what I was thinking just to lighten that up. Uh, who knows, but it doesn't, it seems to work. I mean, what I think my uh, thinking was back then was to make each layer a slightly different hue than the previous one, so then you get a nice modded effect over it, kind of, sort of like, well, marble would be a good example, I guess. Of course, we're not doing marble in this case, but uh, you know it seems to work. I mean, we're getting we're getting something going on here. I don't know what, but something is happening. So the last step is to take some uh, camo medium brown and mix that with some polished gold. That's your your lighter gold color. And finally, I know what I was doing at this point. Um, it needs it needs some sort of metallic to show that was this was once metal. Uh, but I don't want didn't want to use don't didn't do it. Want to use straight metallic because I don't want it too shiny. You know, this is supposed to be very aged. So I just want to give it a, a bit of a sheen around the edges. And the cauldron here, you know, all the girls getting in and out. This is the area that would remain polished from all that, uh, all the movement of climbing in and out of it. And as you can see, my brush has uh, expanded since beginning this. It's getting a bit difficult now, so, um, 
After I do this, I'm going to get a finer brush, one that hasn't been destroyed, and do a bit of cleanup work along the edge here. I'll add a spot here and there as well on the bottom. Okay, that part's done. Um, after I did the uh, medium brown polished gold mix, I decided to use straight gold just along the edges uh, to make it a bit more metallic looking. And then I made a very thin, um, sort of a wash, more of a glaze with the polished gold. And I just kind of applied that here and there to give it a slight sheen. Uh, depending you know on how you look at it um, that's probably not going to show up uh, once this is all done but um, well, I tried so now the next step is to work on the blue patina and uh, for that I have no instructions right now because uh, I used green before uh, before I used a uh, dark green I think thinned out and kind of work that into the bottom and then I used uh, jade green this stuff and just did a fine line around the edges so uh, that's not quite the look, want, look uh, I want to do for this one I want more of a blotchy uh, blue patina so um, I'm gonna have to run some experiments first. I should have painted some uh, junk miniature at this at the same time because I don't want to experiment on this because if I screw it up uh, it's gonna be really hard to redo all of it. I can't just put a base coat and repaint it. I have to redo the whole thing. So I'm starting on the patina here. I did some practice colors and uh, what I'm using is a Vallejo dark blue gray uh, where did the other color go? Ah, there it is. Uh, Oxford blue and um, stormy blue. And I started off with uh, mixing these two colors. Woo! Mixing these two colors with the uh, SS camo black brown, and sort of stippling them on. And then once I was dry, thinning it out and making a wash. And then using just the straight colors, repeating the process, trying to mix it up. Uh, my stipple brush didn't work too well because it's a bit more uh, too many corners in here I couldn't get in well so I was just using another cheap brush. And right now I'm just taking a thinned out stormy blue and putting it over and trying to tone together all those different blue colors and trying to make some like rain mark lines This is going to be a slow process until I figure out exactly what I want. Basically, uh, I'm just experimenting here until I get the exact shade I want. Now, since I'm just using you know, very thin washes, you know, I'm not too concerned about screwing it up because it's it's a slow process. So if I see it going in the wrong direction, I you know I can just stop and uh, you know try something else. Just going with translucent layers and slowly building them up. So, there we go. I think I need to work a bit more blue up higher. Actually, I should probably be putting some around. Yeah, you know what? I'm gonna be. I'm gonna go back and do some around uh, these areas as well, because you know the patina process would take place in these little cracks as well. So I'm gonna take those two colors again and make a few washes and do it up here yeah that's that's a good plan oh um, sorry I forgot to mention um, uh, I did repaint the uh, metallic portions on the cauldron uh, I wasn't liking the look of the polished gold especially since I'm going to be painting more gold on this figure so I went back and I used some uh, oh what's it called brassy brass from the uh, Vallejo range 
I think that's the game color range. There it is, yeah, Brassy Brass. Mix that with the uh, medium brown, SS Camel medium brown. And so I stipple that on and then I followed that up with just a straight Brassy Brass and then just a little bit of glorious gold around the edge. And I'm liking that look a bit more than with the uh, polished gold. So here we are. Metal is, uh, I'm saying it's done, it's going to need a bit more touching up. Um, I can see some brush strokes there, then I'm going to have to go back with some other paint and try to feather out. Uh, I use all the colors I mentioned earlier. Uh, with just one addition, this uh, Vallejo Game Color Electric, yeah, Electric Blue. And I just did that as a thin wash just right around the edges and that really helped it pop. Uh, definitely does need uh, the patina up on top. That uh, helped the look a lot rather than just collecting it all at the bottom. So I may do a bit more, but I'm going to wait and paint the rest of the model first uh, because um, once, once everything's painted up, you know, I'm sure I'm going to fill in some of this blue by accident. So um, I'm going to have to fix it anyway. Might as well just wait and then uh, add more once everything else is done. And then I can decide, uh, you know, where and how much to add. Uh, next step is going to be the rest of the metal work. Um, I was originally planning on doing most of it gold, but I'm having second thoughts. Um, I may do a steel color instead and try to... I don't want it rusty because I don't want this thing to look like a junk cauldron, but uh, I don't know. I'm going to have to experiment a little bit and uh, decide what to use. I will be using both. I just don't know in what quantity and where. So we'll find out in a second. So I decided to go with uh, silver metal for the legs and the band going around the cauldron. And I used uh, gunmetal, Vallejo Air, and then highlighted that with uh, chrome. Chrome has a nice blue tech, uh, blue uh, tint to it. And to go with the blue patina on the bronze, I decided to uh, try shading the silver with blue, keep that silver look. So I just have some uh, ink, blue ink. Thin down very much, drying off the brush, and then carefully starting to put in a glaze to get some uh, shade. And this is a very slow process, you gotta build it up. A little too much blue on there. It's not gonna go all, all on, on one coat. I want to do it this in stages because I'm just trying to give it a hint of blue, I'm not trying to turn it blue. So to give you some insight into my thought process when uh, choosing colors, um, I painted all the silver, then I started painting the gold. And uh, well, the gold is starting off with just a mix of uh, glorious gold and uh, cobra leather. You can use any brown, no metallic. It just uh, helps the uh, metallic paint the cover, and then I go over in gold and the highlights. I did a whole painting video on gold, and that's what I'm doing right here. So uh, go check out that video from about six months ago if you want more. Um, back to the subject. The thought process of doing this, um, I painted all the silver, and then I started painting the gold. And uh, trying to decide what to paint gold uh, is the difficult part. Uh, initially I had these two bands, silver, and the gold just wasn't spaced right. Um, because it was like a little silver, then a little gold, and some silver and gold, and silver gold. It was too hodgepodge. So I'm just sitting here thinking about what I want to paint gold now. Um, right now the top is looking kind of okay. I'm not too sure about leaving these silver. Um, but you can see the top is very heavy on gold and the bottom is very heavy on silver. So you want to balance that because you don't want one area to be all one color and then another area be another. So that's what I'm trying to decide right now uh, about what to do. Um, the band going around the bottom here, I'm possibly going to paint that all gold. Um, I'm just 
staring and thinking at it right now. Um, what I wish I did was put something else down here that I could paint gold. You know, a secondary smaller band. Actually, yeah, that would have been a good idea. I wonder if I can still do that. If I did a secondary band, just like I did up top here, um, and paint that gold, that would be perfect. Um, I'm going to lose all the patina, though, if I glue on styrene on top of all this. So, that's it. So, I'm just thinking now. Um, not sure exactly what I want to do, but I just have to get more gold on the bottom. I may have to repaint the leg, you know, now I think about it, I think the legs are going to have to be repainted gold. Um, I have to think about this. Uh, you'll find out what happens in uh, a second. So here is the, uh, well not final results, but uh, finally decided on the colors to use, metallic colors to use in the cauldron here. Um, I decided to repaint the legs gold which I'm kind of disappointed on because the, the legs were looking really good in that silver color but um, it was just too much silver for the model. Uh, what I ended up doing is keeping this silver and the legs gold and I still need to finish painting this but I added some, some uh, spots of silver because painting this gold and it was too heavy on the gold on the bottom and uh, that helps to break it up a little bit. I would have liked to do more but there's no clear defined areas on the legs where I could you know, just paint some silver on. Uh, now we have a nice balance of color. We got there's a lot of gold down here, there's a lot of gold up here, we have the stripe of silver, we have this other stripe of silver and then a little bit on the bottom. Uh, I tried putting some silver on these little doodads on the bottom, not liking how that looks so I'm gonna repaint that in gold. But uh, overall it's a good balance so that's important. Um, also started on the figure, just a rough base coat right now. Um, I'm not going to go over painting the figure because I already did a extremely long article on painting flesh and this is a copy of that using the three Panzer Ace flesh colors. The only difference on this one from that article is I'm going to try to make the flesh just a slight, slightly more pale which means I'm going to be concentrating more of the highlights with the uh, the highlight flesh color. So just a little bit, small amount of shade, concentrating more on these two. And uh, that'll be done shortly. So with the flesh painted, uh, we're definitely entering the home stretch here, not too much uh, left to do. Again, it was painted just like in my painting flesh article, uh, video, excuse me. Uh, just concentrate a bit more on the highlights, so she's she's not really too pale. Um, definitely not pale, but uh, it's light enough where I like it. Uh, the hair, uh, it's just base coated in black and then dry brushed with uh, a couple greens. Um, the green is a bit of a controversial color here because I don't have any other green on the figure. However, I do have green in the army, um, so. We'll see if it works in the end or not. And also using green on a figure that was a dryad is kind of uh, irking me, but uh, we'll find out in the end if it works. Uh, one of the last things to paint are the tentacles, and that's the easiest one to figure out because the main color of my army is purple, so I know what color I'm going to paint them. Start off with some violet and uh, mix in my blue violet, my main uh, dark elf army color, and then work it, work it up into some uh, wolf gray for the final highlights. All right, so here we go. Um, we are virtually done here. Figures painted, uh, tentacles are painted. The uh, the violet and the blue violet colors. Also did the blood. Uh, started out with a purple, and then worked my way up uh, to red. A couple different shades of red, and then um, covered that up with a light purple wash to give it a bit of shade in the the deep bubbles, the popped bubbles. Uh, also thinned out some red and did just a little bit up the tentacles and her and 
around the sides of the cauldron here. Uh, along the sides, I contemplated going back and forth between adding more blue and adding more brown. I added more blue and I thought it was too much and then I took some of the brown colors again and the brass and stippled, uh, stippled over to kind of blend it in. Um, the issue I'm having is the same issue that I was having for um, the reason for not putting a mural on this thing because uh, when I'm, let's see if I can get this right in the camera, when I'm looking at it like this I say you know there's not enough blue on it and then I flip it over and say whoa there's way too much blue on it so that's that's the issue I'm facing right now um, I just can't find a happy medium it's you know it's an issue with the the shape of this cauldron so but um, I'm gonna be leaving it as it is because I think if I add more blue it I'm gonna lose everything I did here and just it's gonna look like a blue bowl but there we go so still not looking looking not too shabby and the base the base is virtually done as well I didn't bother recording that because rocks are incredibly easy to paint all you have to do is just take some random grays and some other ones that I put away somewhere and you just go through and dry brush different colors of grays. Uh, you can add different colors as well. I added some brown violet which is a green, greenish brown color. And then uh, for the highlights I usually like to switch it up so I'm using cold grays for the rocks and then I switch it up and put a warm color in for the highlights like this bone color. And then after that I just added some more green and brown washes to mute it all together. So. Rocks are easy. You cannot paint a rock wrong because rocks come in any color you like. Um, so there you go. And the skulls are painted. Uh, still need to paint the exterior part of the base. And uh, I think we're ready for the Delco. So figure is done, basically. And now I'm just livening up the blood a bit. What I have here is a mix of future floor wax, which is extremely glossy. And I added just a couple drops of red ink, which is not necessary since I painted the blood red, but it hopefully will give me a bit of uh, you know, tinted transparency, so hopefully it will give the blood a bit more depth. And um, right now I'm just using a brush because uh, you know, I want to make sure where it gets applied. But after this dries, I'm going to go back with a pipette. Oops, I just dropped something. Go back with a pipette and do a thicker layer. So hopefully that will give me a good, uh, real good transparency effect for the blood. All right, final step. Um, base is done. Um, I added static grass, two different colors of dead grass, and then some of the uh, army painter battle, excuse me, battlefield swamp tufts of grass, which I like so much. And the same blood that I'm add, added to the cauldron, I also decided to add to the base as a little bit of a spilt blood. So I added some more red to this and just a little bit of, <clears throat> excuse me, a little bit of blue to darken it up. And I'm just going with the pipette. And the good thing about this base here is uh, it's got all these little channels in it, so perfect places for the blood to flow. Looks like tomato sauce. So I'm gonna just do this a little more. Probably, hopefully, get the flow a little bit in the cracks. There we go. Ah, so bloody. So a little bit more of this, and uh, let it dry, and. Uh, Attach the base 
to the figure and we're going to be done. Okay, here we are, all done. Um, where did I leave off? Uh, the blood on the base, all completed. Did about three layers to build it up to the thickness I wanted. Um, made the mistake of, as it was running down, it uh, filled in colored uh, all my static grass here, so uh, I had to kind of scrape that off and then redo it because I didn't want all the grass all red. It looked weird. Uh, there we have that. Uh, oh, the only other thing I mentioned, I forgot to mention, was uh, the cauldron itself. Um, well, I don't know how many minutes back it will be on this video, but uh, I was talking about not liking the color on it and trying something else. What I end up doing was giving it a few very thin glazes of my stormy blue, a dark blue, and that gave a real nice blue tone uh, to the overall cauldron, and I'm, I'm liking where it is now. So I am satisfied with that. And, um, yeah, that's about it. So, uh, Cauldron of Blood, all done. Just need to work on the crew, which are going to be these two, which are simply um, the Command Witch Elves, since I guess it's popular to use a uh, battle, standard, battle Standard Bearer Cauldron of Blood. This one will fit nicely in that one. And that might be the witch hag. That'll save me from having to paint another figure. Okay, so that's it. Uh, sorry for the incredibly long video. But uh, we're all done. Hope you enjoyed it. And now it's time for the dance party.